Hi, my name is Laurent Belcourt. I'm a research scientist at Unity Technologies. In this talk, I'm going to present the improvement we made and the insights we got, me and my colleague Eric Heitz, when working on our screen space sampler. First, I would like to warn you that video compression might deteriorate the quality of the images. We are going to look at noisy images and compression does not play nice with them. So I encourage you to go and check the slides directly on our website. To give you more context about this talk, two years ago, we had a SIGGRAPH talk about building a sampler to distribute the error of Monte Carlo integration as a blue noise in screen space. What does that mean? Traditionally, path tracers use sequences of quasi-random numbers per pixels for Monte Carlo integration. To avoid aliasing, those sequences are uncorrelated to each other, usually using what we call random scrambling of a main sequence. As you can see on the right, random scrambling produces an error that distributes like a white noise in screen space. The power spectrum contains energy in all frequencies. Inspired by Indian Georgiev and Marcos Farado's 2016 SIGGRAPH talk, we introduced a sampler that correlates sequences of quasi-random numbers across pixels to distribute the error closer to a blue noise. This sampler produces images that look more converged than random scrambling ones, though, in fact, the error with respect to the ground truth is the same. I am not going to dive into all the details of this method, and I encourage you to go to this project's web page. When we released this sampler, we had no idea that people were finding so appealing. Quickly, it became the standard sampler for Unity path tracing routines. For example, the ray tracing in the HDRP or in the Lightmap Baker used this sampler. But it went further than mere technological adoption. We got lots of questions, feedbacks about the core ideas. We also discovered that people sometimes used it incorrectly. Thanks to all the feedback we got, we were able to improve on our 2019 sampler. Sometimes, questions led us to new understanding we would like to share with you. As a teasing, here is a rendering using our previous sampler. Though the rendering is better than pure random scrambling, the quality of the error distribution is not that great. Our new sampler achieves a much better job in this scene. Let's talk about how we move from the left side sampler to the new one. To do so, I will need to give you a glance of our 2019 talk. The sampler uses as input the Sobol sequence and two textures that we called the scrambling and the sorting mask. Every pixel of the scrambling and sorting mask in blue and red here scramble the Sobol sequence. In practice, we XOR the Sobol sequence with the value in the scrambling mask and shuffle the indexing with the value in the sorting mask. So different pixels correspond to different sequences. When we use this sampler in a path tracer, we obtain renderings where the correlation of the pixels depends on the correlation between the sequences. This sampler is quite straightforward to include in a path tracer and the code is two texture fetches and two XORs. Now, the key point of improving the quality of rendering is to optimize the mask. But to make them scene agnostic, we optimize them with respect to a database of test integrants. This database is made of randomly oriented heavy sites. Given this test function, we can use our sampler to produce an image where each pixel is the integral of the test function with the corresponding sequence. By changing the test function, we obtain different realization of the test rendering. Our idea was to stack a very large number of those realizations. In fact, we used 2 to the power 16 randomly chosen EV sites and got 2 to the power 16 realizations. To distribute the integration error as a blue noise, we optimized the two masks to obtain blue noise images out of the test renderings. The optimization was using a genetic algorithm 
that swapped pixels according to a loss. When we talked about this idea, people were skeptical that the blue noise distribution would transfer to other types of integrands. Since the mask were optimized for discontinuous integrands, it was thought that it would not produce a valid blue noise distribution on continuous integrands. Yet, it performs very well on continuous integrands. Here is the reason why. Let's start from the test integrands realizations. Each pixel can be seen as a vector containing the integral value of all test function with respect to a single sequence. So each entry in the vector corresponds to a different test function. The insight we got from this point of view is that the optimization process is simply swapping vectors of very large dimensions. Looking at this vector space, we can extract its principal direction using an eigen decomposition. When we optimize the mask, we equivalently optimize the spatial distribution of another set of vectors in the space of the PCA. And this space is given by a rotation matrix in this i-dimensional space. So the optimizer is optimizing the realization of a different set of functions that are defined by the eigenvectors. We call them eigentest functions. Each eigentest function is the weighted sum of all the test functions weighted by the values in the eigenvector. And because there are so many discontinuous functions, we end up with eigentest functions that are pretty smooth. We compare the eigentest function from the Sobel sampler to the eigentest function from an independent sampler using the same optimizer. We found that the independent sampler would add even smoother eigentest functions. And it seems to be linked to the ability of the sampler to produce a good blue noise distribution. Indeed, when we compare the Sobel sampler to the independent sampler on a simple smooth function like a cosine, we obtain the following result. While the independent sequence has higher variance, the Sobold sampler has lost its blue noise property. So we concluded that not all sequences are equal when we want to optimize them to distribute error as a blue noise. In fact, the scrambling mechanism seems to be the culprit. Our intuition is that when exoring the Sobold sequence, we do not produce a large variety of sequences. In contrast, the independent sampler produces very different sequences. If we change the scrambling mechanism of the Sobel sequence for cranny patterson rotation, that is shift modulo 1, we obtain a power spectra with good blue noise property. However, if we use a cranny patterson rotation, we break the stratification of the Sobel sequence. This is what we advised against two years ago. So we have seen that our ability to optimize the blue noise distribution of the error depends on the capacity of the scrambling mechanism to produce a large variety of scrambled sequence. We failed to have such a scrambling for Sobel, so we decided to change the sequence. And we looked at sequences that conserves convergence when shift module one. And those sequences are rank one lattices. I won't go into the details of those sequences, Alexander Keller details them in his SIGGRAPH talk, my favorite samples. I advise you go and check his slides. The only thing I will mention about rank one lattices is that they are point wrapped in the unit domain, so shift modulo one is a no-brainer. Still, we were concerned about one thing. One rank one lattice might be inferior in convergence compared to Sobol. And it is true that for smooth functions, the Sobol sequence is superior. However, in practice, for rendering scenarios and moderate sample counts, both have very similar convergence properties. But once optimized, a screen space sample with rank one uh, sequence leads to visually better renderings. We have improved the quality of the blue noise by changing the sequence and the scrambling scheme. But maybe there is still much to be done. In order to enable people to experiment with new sequences or ideas, we are releasing our optimizer. We even provide a parallel version 
running on the GPU for quick iterations. Our 2019 optimizer was built as a genetic algorithm. We would sequentially swap randomly selected pairs in the mask. But it was really slow. To reach a good quality, you need many, many mutations. So we decided to build a parallel version of the optimizer. But it, this isn't so easy. Let's say that what we have here is an almost converged data mask. And let's assume that there is only one pixel to be swapped to reach the global optimum for the optimization. The iterative algorithm would randomly pick two pixels and test whether they need to be swapped. And since they would not, it would test another pair. And another pair until it finally randomly select the one pixel to change. I hope you see with me that this scheme is an optimal. In this context, if we could test all possible combination, we would find the last mutation needed and ends the algorithm. But testing all possible mutation has two issues. First, it creates data races. So we need to find a collision-free swapping scheme. Second, we need to preserve neighborhoods. If many close pixels are swapped at the same time, they might not reduce the loss globally. Let's see how we build a collision-free scheme. At each step of the optimization, we linearize this mask and permutes the order of its pixels. This gives us a list of pixels to swap. What we do is we pair consecutive pixels together and test them for swapping. This gives us a collision-free mutation scheme. Now we need to find a way to preserve neighborhoods. However, we found that this is actually not a big deal. By simply reducing the number of pairs to test, the algorithm would always converge. In our implementation, we test only half the possible pairs. This even introduces some simulated annealing effect at the beginning of the optimization when almost all the pairs are swapped. Porting this algorithm on the GPU allowed us to perform quicker iterations. We would only wait minutes for good quality mask and not hours. We are also releasing the implementation of our research engineer, Sylvain Durand, on the project's webpage. While our goal is to increase the perceptual quality of our renderings, we wanted to have a way to quantify improvement. So we developed a quality criterion to be able to assess if a screen space sampler is better or worse than another without having to look at tons of renderings. To do so, we had to remove the constraints and bias of a perceptual metric. Our criterion has to be free of medium or viewing conditions. Third, we developed a criterion that is purely numeric. Inspired by Schitzhoff and colleagues, the main idea is to look at denoising. Since in the end, the rendering is likely to be denoise, we leverage the fact that blue noise improves the RMSC after denoising. This is similar to the idea of Chisholm and colleagues who included such ID in the optimization loss. However, we did not include it in the loss due to the high computational cost it adds. The only remaining issue was to produce a criterion that does not rely on a specific scene. And for that, we go back to our test integrants. Let's take the example of this rendering test. Each pixel is the integral of the test integrand on the left with different sequences of points. If we blur this image with a Gaussian kernel, it has the effect of reducing the variance in the image and move each pixel closer to the current true value. With larger blur, we get closer and closer. Our criterion consists in looking at the convergence of the tile towards the ground truth for an increasing wider kernel. Because we cannot rely on a single test integrand, we average the convergence of many randomly chosen test integrands. Here is a comparison between our new sampler and the old sampler at 16 samples per pixel. What we can see is that both start around the same value. This is expected since for test integrands, the rank 1 sequence and the Sobol sequence share the same convergence. As we start to blur the image, 
the two curves separate and we start to see the effect of the optimization. For larger and larger blur, we can see that the rank 1 sampler provides a steeper slope. This means that the denoised image will be closer to the reference. All this analysis left us with a question about the current trend in research. There have been a lot of efforts so far to build pseudo-random sequences with strong stratification to reduce as much as possible the error of a single pixel. But very little research was done on whether this level of refinement is needed if after denoising the convergence of the whole image is not as good. We have heavily optimized our sampler and their distribution in screen space. But I would like to talk about their use now. The first point I would like to make here is that you should use a screen space sampler wisely. There is no point in optimizing with such a care the arrangement of sequences if, in the end, this correlation is wasted by how you use them. One example of such misuse is to use screen space sampler in a bidirectional path tracer. A fundamental concept that you must remember is that, is that with screen space sampler, random values must be consumed at the same time for the same dimension across pixels. If we take the example of this eye and light path, there is two ways to create a path of length 5. It means that we must ensure that both endpoints vertices share the same dimensions in our sampler. If not, we will mix together two dimensions that are spatially uncorrelated, and this will be detrimental to the blue noise distribution. People often requested to have blue noise sampler with very high dimensions. For our 2019 sampler, we provided 8 dimensions in our sampler, but we did not directly optimize for 8 dimensions. This would reduce the quality we can achieve for all dimension, for example for direct elimination, and it would take ages to optimize. Instead of looking for more, di more dimension, we advise to pad 2D sequences with random offsets. This has the benefit of preserving a little more the correlation in higher dimension if it's really needed. Another request was to get higher sample count sequences. If doing so, please remind that the best quality is always obtained at the target sample count. Intermediate sample counts can only be partially good thanks to the sorting. As a summary, with two years of feedback from the community, we were able to improve our screen space sampler. It no better distributes the error in screen space. We were able to do it from new insights we got from the optimization of test integrants. This led us to change the sequence of pseudo-random numbers. We also improved our optimization code to be faster and GPU-friendly and brought us a criterion to look for how better sampler were. One key point that drived us is the feedback and interest we got from the community. So thank you to everyone who reached us with questions and requests. Thank you for your attention. And if you want to dig deeper into this subject, I encourage you to go to the project webpage where you will find all our material.